Hello everybody, welcome to part two of Five Idiots. Um, here's all the crew, um, well, you know, let's get straight back into it. We've just got Dimitriov has gone out and ch and yelled his challenge to Mola Ram. Okay, so let's let's repaint this picture a little bit, right? So Dimitriov, you move forward, you see this ugly, vile scene below you, right? And it just edifies and codifies your belief that there's some evil shit going on here, right? There's there, right no nowhere in the in the um, in the civilized world would there be a giant river of blood with with all kinds of crapola going on in it, right? Um, and you scream and it, or maybe you don't scream, but you you loudly you know boom your voice and, and you make these statements and and immediately Molaram rises to his feet from his knees, right? He stands up slowly. And he, he, you know, sets his shoulders back and he's got this, this, these large uh, mantles on his shoulders that are, are made of, uh, of animal pelt and the two giant horns coming off of his skull is uh, his headdress. And he slowly turns to you, Dimitriov. And in his hand, you can see it clearly, right? Because all these braziers are lit. He's got a still beating heart in his left hand. And he's got this, his eyes are just bloodshot red, but blank. Like he's staring into an abyss. And he looks at you and he says, you think you can stop this? You think you can come here and stop all of this? How far away is he? Fifty foot. What are the others of you doing? What are you? Tell me what's going on, Daedal, in your mind, in Daka, in 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 Elliot. You've seen your compatriot move forward. He's proclaimed that what you are here to do, and and again, you've seen this guy that literally kicked the shit out of you guys not a day ago, right? Hold on, hold on. Like, <clears throat> uh, so is he like is he? Is he there? Like, is is he someone that I can converse with? Or, like, you're saying like his eyes are black and stuff. Well, he, you can definitely shout to him. He's obviously heard you because he's he's stood up and he's responded to you. Okay. What did he respond? He had, he had shouted back. Basically, you think you can stop what's going on here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How do we, uh... That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is a shit plan, and I think I can't stop what's going on here. Well, it's how do we cross this cavern, that's the thing, All right? So, well, three of us Anything from you, Elliot? Any thoughts? Any uh, actions? I shout to Dimitriov, uh, you must defeat him in the battlefield of ideas. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> I am going to throw a Hancock at the heart in his hand. Oh, wow. Okay, give That's me a, um, a give me a uh, uh, give me a roll for that. It's a disadvantage <laughs> because it's like, because like... of the distance. Yes, and I'll uh, tell you now if you if you throw it, you're gonna have to let it go, rope and all, because of the distance. All right, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so you throw the Hancock, and it reaches this point right here, and it strikes an invisible barrier of some kind and falls down into the blood. Mm. Well, how the hell do we get across this? I mean, I've got the rope, but like, we're gonna like tight walk across the rope. And 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 you notice Mola Ram doesn't even move, right? He just he's he's watching you, and in his right hand he pulls this ugly heinous dagger out. He's got that still beating left left hand, the still beating heart in the left hand, and from his right he just pulls out this jagged, ugly black dagger that's got some type of a bone handle. That he's holding in his right hand now. So it's pretty obvious that that's magic, right? The the invisible barrier, even to even to people as stupid as Daka, right? That would be that would be obviously a magical barrier, <laughs> right? So I guess Daka. Is going well, to it's be a like, barrier. That's for sure. We don't yeah. know if it's magical or what, but it's a barrier. Well, it's not glass, is it? <laughs> no, no, it's it's not glass. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Elliot Flagel, do you have anything that could uh, counter this 
magical barrier? Nope. We must interrogate the demon's mind. Mm -hmm. You could talk to you could put words in his head, Flargo. I could. He's not gonna. It's not like. I, I, is that something you really want to suggest, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> might. He might throw himself in the worms if Flargo speaks to him long enough. <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna make Flargo your negotiator. <laughs> what is it you're doing here? Were you on trial? What is it you're doing here? Okay, can I? Is that was that a question to to? to was that in character to be? Yeah. What yeah. is it you're doing here? Okay. So so now so he just he's still staring at you, right? And he's starting to raise the right hand. And it's just going, and, and as it goes up, his his face is just becoming, I don't want to say like contorted, but it's like, you know when you, when somebody like clenches their jaw, like just getting ready for something big, and you can see the veins are starting to pop a little bit in his cheekbones, and his jaw is getting really tight, and his jowls, the muscles in his, in his jaw are tightening and getting a little bit larger, and his neck is seizing up a little bit. All right, how do you leap? <laughs> 40 feet. <laughs> I don't think you can leap that. Can I cast a spell? If you want to, yes. I'd like to. Oh, I, I need to. I need to move. I guess I join. I join Dmitriov. Uh, on the the edge of the chasm. Um. And then measure how far I am away from all of that. Then I pull out my laser device. <laughs> <laughs> and then cast command. On Molaram. As I tire of his, um, what do you call them? Light shows um, and tricks. His muses? <laughs> his non sequiturs. <laughs> his non sequiturs. Per se. Per se. Per se. So when Elliot um, moves out, um, Elon moves with him because that was the last commands of Demetria, right? Protect mm. the Nom. I'll move yep. out as well. And what, what command would you give him? Approach. Oh my god. <laughs> Wisdom saving throw. I'm doing this one in private. Yes. Come on. I mean, you say that, but I just saw a dice roll across <laughs> the screen. Oh, did you? Okay, so I don't know what that shows, but anyway. So he looks, he looks down and he, and he immediately begins laughing at you, Elliot. And he says again, you think you can, and he just plunges that dagger into the heart. Oh, man. And when he does that, it goes through his hand. <laughs> and he just, I mean, all the way down to the bone handle. And there is no reaction from him whatsoever, right? And this heart. Flames, <laughs> the stones are mine, Doctor Jones. And he, and he <laughs> is the the heart flames up in his hands, right? And you hear it's it's uncanny, right? There's a loud your um your uh your mic's open, Nato. You hear a loud peal of a bell, but it's not like a, a gong, right? It's like a, a a chime. It doesn't hurt the ears. It does not cause any pain. It doesn't cause you to retort in any way. It is, but it is the loudest, most clear, beautiful note you've ever heard. And next to Molaram, to his right, appears what to date is the largest blood leech that you've ever seen. This sucker's a good 15 feet across, about 25 feet up. It's got to be a good five feet around. And he looks at you again and he says, you think you can stop any of this? And he draws the dagger back out of his hand. And as he draws it out, his blood is just falling onto the ground. And the heart is completely gone. And this worm is just sitting there writhing. It's not moving. It's not attacking. It's not doing anything. But it's just, I mean, this is... There's there's fear struck in you all. There's no roles for it. I'm not going to tell you guys that you're going to run away at this. But this is the most fear you've ever felt, even fighting some of these bloodworms and seeing them eat people down down above you. 
Twerk See, me. that that worm is not designed to sit on that chair. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you say, Elliot? <laughs> That's our character. <laughs> well, no, I mean, there's, there's, you know, being a logical individual, you may actually, you know, because you're still trying to figure out what the fuck this chair is, right? Yeah. yeah Dacca well, looks at the worm and looks at the chair and goes, <laughs> Any reaction at, at all? <sighs> what reaction? Uh, I, you know what? Uh, like... Honestly, what I'm thinking is, you see like these, like you see the blood below us. Is that loads of worms as well? Because it looks like worms. Mm, there's it's writhing spaghetti. in it. Definitely, there's writhing in it. You haven't seen any form of worms per se, right? Um, <laughs> per se, you haven't seen any worm, <laughs> worm-like forms. There is writhing. There is motion. Um, potentially, you could make out the backs of worms. I'm not going to say that's what it is, but. You know, who knows I, what else it could be. Can I, because I have a torch and I have an oil flask. And can I, like, throw an oil flask in and throw a torch in? For the blood? Absolutely. So if you, you, you would, you, you, there's nothing that stops you or precludes you from that. Um, what you've thrown actually stopped on the far side, as opposed to your side, right? Uh, but with all that writhing, right? If you were to drop this, imagine dropping a you know a, a, a flask of oil on a writhing ocean. Not a crazy you know bang bang bang, but but a lot of movement. That that oil is going to dissipate and kind of move around and get sucked in a little bit here and there. It's churning <laughs> down there. It's not a it's not a flat body of water, if you will, flat body of blood. It says right. Uh, as an action, you can splash the oil in this flask onto a creature within five feet of you. So can I, can I not splash the oil onto these guys and then light a torch and drop it on them? Who are these, are these guys? guys? The worms, the writhing worms. Oh, so, so yeah, if you wanted to just, I mean, I, so here's the thing, right? It's a flask of oil. So you could like dump it out. If you dropped it or tossed it in, it would still be contained within the flask, even if you pop the top of it, right? Mm. You would have a portion. It probably wouldn't break. You're not that high that, that the, the, the flask would break and or shatter. You can definitely, you could dump it in if you wanted to and then toss a torch down. Um, <clears throat> I mean, like, yes. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to. It says like a five foot area, so I don't really like. It's obviously like one square. Yeah. Um. But I don't know what else to do at this point. I so... think we should get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, like, are you real? Well, what can we do? I think we should burn the worms. We need to talk where... to him. We well, just summon that. <laughs> well, do it, Elio. Do it. Talk to him. All right, you're yeah. Do your and, booming uh, voice that might intimidate him. Oh, 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 I, oh I, I cast uh, thaumaturgy and my my voice booms up to three times its loudness. Yeah, three times as loud. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but no change in pitch. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you know, w w what is this devilry? You know, what, what is you know, what is your motivation here? And, yeah, and he looks at you, Elliot, and, and immediately just and he look, he stares at you. And again, his eyes are like blood red and 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 um, vacant. But you can tell he's staring at you, right? You feel his stare. It's nothing magical. It's not, it's just you can tell he's gazing directly at you. And he says, and he points at the worm, and he goes, "This, this is power. You think you have power? This is power. This is the power that I have been granted." You're talking to the wrong gnome. I do not think I have power and and what of and what of this worm you, you know what, what what purpose is it here for what what for what reason you know is this is this power accessible you know what why is uh, you know why is the worm here the great one i am first amongst him i am first amongst him i am his number one i am the one he will take with him i am the one that holds his power now the great one and the old god you think you know 
You think you know what controls this universe. You know nothing, small one. This is mine now. And his eyes just, I mean, you can just tell this. He's just, oh, he's just drunk on power at this point, right? This is, you feel that this is probably one of the greatest acts in his mind that he's ever done summoning something like this. I turn to the rest of the group and say, uh, the, the guy's insane, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the guy's insane. What, what, what's the worm doing? Is the, like, I don't know. I feel like, look, he's just summoned this worm, all right? Like this, it's probably some quite kind of old creature, right? You know, big old eating blood worm. And, you know, surely it's a bit peckish, right? I don't know. Like, is it is it really just sitting there, you know, nice and quietly? Like, you know, is it not, you know... So, looking over at the worm, it's not... It's it's taking in... It's been... It's been it, it appeared, right? It didn't crawl out of the earth. It didn't fall from the ceiling. It's... For lack of a better term, it is literally taking in its surroundings. Imagine being plucked from wherever you are and being dropped in a foreign location. And whatever senses it holds to you in your history with the smaller blood worms, it was always attracted to fresh blood. Um, but this one doesn't seem to be moving towards Mola Ram at all. It does, like I said, it seems to be, I don't want to, it's not like gazing around. You see no eye holes of any kind, right? It seems to just be taking in what is going on. It just appeared less than 15, 20 seconds ago. I say we just do one. <laughs> what do you what do you do? What? We do one. It means run away in English. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Surely we can't. Surely we can't uh, uh, abandon this place. You know, right at the. Yeah. You know... What can we do? What can we do? He's got a force field. He's he's a he's a better sorcerer than either of you two. Well, as long as he's there and the worm's there, they're not, you know, causing any trouble, right, at least. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, true. so he begins to now pace back and forth, right? He begins to pace. He's moving left and right in front of this. And you can just, I mean, you can just feel, like, how strong he thinks he is. This guy is full of hubris at this point. He just, this guy thinks he's the shit. <laughs> and he's staring at you guys like you are nothing. And he keeps talking about the power. The power is like nothing I have ever felt. <laughs> and f f from from where do you divine this power? And also, what's your name, by the way? <laughs> like I am Mola Ram. I am he who is first. <laughs> What's your name? What's your I, name, by the way? <laughs> cast not... <laughs> you're, you're killing me, Jim. Cast not that name lightly amongst yours. I am Molaram. I am first among he's. I am first among the night demon. And then when he, when he says that, another peal of that same bell strikes, except this one is ten times as loud. Oh, fuck. And I mean, it's... Again, it doesn't hurt the ears. It it doesn't. Who are you? It doesn't. It doesn't strike fear. Just this loud, amazing peal. Um, Molaram. And Never sitting on the throne. Oh man, it's night demon. <laughs> sitting on the throne before you is this individual who seems to be sewn together at all of his major joints. Who has half of a, a, it's not a human skull covering his face, but a skull of something much, much larger and much, much more. It, it's something, it's very primordial, right? It's, it's, it's rigid. It's got, it's, it's just, I don't know how to describe it any better than that, right? And he's, the way he's sitting on this throne, though, is not, it's not in a means of power. He's got his his, his rear end is on one of the one of the armrests. His right leg is up on where he would sit his rear end, and his left leg is down on the ground and is very nonchalant. He's very he's just sitting there and he and he's and he's looking around and he looks down and Molaram's eyes just go wide. 
as he falls to his knees and he says, you have summoned him. You have summoned the great one, the great night demon. And, and, and when he says his name again, the night demon looks down to his left and looks down at him. And he crosses his face with his right hand like this. And he's, and he's gazing down on him like, a, like he's gazing upon an ant on a, in a field. And he looks at him and he goes, you think you know power? You think you know what it means to summon the old god's pets? And he turns to him and he crushes his hand like this. And Molaram explodes into a big blood puddle and is just gone. Fuck. And Molaram is just des I mean, he's just, he's across the ground in just, there's nothing left but blood and viscera. And it's just, you you just look at it and your eyes, all of your eyes just go huge because of what you've just seen. Molaram is nothing more. And he slowly stands from the throne, moves over to his right and looks down at the blood worm and starts to pet him softly over what you appear to, what you would think is his head. Well, I uh, guess our work here is done. Mm. Uh, let's... Have a nice oh, day, night demon. <laughs> 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 the little high five to Elliot. <laughs> the fist bump to Flagel. <laughs> oh my god! What what's the range of Mage Hand, by the way? Uh, thirty yards, I think. Thirty feet. Thirty feet. Thirty yeah. feet. Yeah. Uh. Shame you couldn't just go and get his, like, helmet so I could, we could take it back and say, look, oh, we no, killed no, no, the no. evil leader. <laughs> we've got, we've got you, Jim, there is Erdaka, there is nothing but blood. I mean, he was he was reduced to nothing wow. but a blood splatter. And it's a big one. It's, it's you know, it, imagine taking, a, a, you know, the entire contents of a human, six foot two, <laughs> 180 pounds, and you just pour it out onto the ground. <laughs> yeah. And there's nothing else besides that. Yep. Wow. I, I address the uh, the big lad on the throne <laughs> and say, you know, and, and one of us, one of this world, you know, why are you here? Who are you, little one? Which patron do you worship? I am Elliot the Nom, and I'm not so sure I worship any patron. I am here with my friends in the service of the humans who live here, of the people who live here, who have been, you know, killed and, you know, hurt and traumatized by, well, the pile of blood on the floor. <laughs> by the blood on the floor. <laughs> so he looks at you and goes, you know nothing of the history. You know nothing of... of of everything that you think you know about religion, everything you everything you think you know about creation, everything you think you know about this this planet that you're on, everything you know is wrong. And the old gods are back. We've been gone far too long. We've let this world descend into madness for too long. The religions, the races, the wars that you've beset, None of that matters anymore. None of that matters. This is ours, and we're here to take it back. There's nothing you can do about it. Do you want some help? <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> and he's, I mean, when he says this, this isn't like a threat, right? Mm. He's stating fact. Mm. He's still petting his worm. He, he, you know, maybe he puts his, his foot up on, on the front of the of the front of the throne. This guy's a good 20, 25 feet tall. You know, he's a big boy, right? And 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 he's 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 very nonchalant in what he says. His voice is very powerful, very strong. Yeah, I mean that's all very melodramatic, but 
what does it mean in practical terms? Are you are you here to enslave our societies? Are you are you here to you know destroy our our cities, our civilizations, or you know what? You know, uh, tell us some more about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's your dating profile look. So when you Give say that, Ellie, when, when you say that, Ellie, right? When you say, you know, are you here to destroy our civilization? Are you here to? He kind of he he gives that like piff look, like. Like, all of that's below him. It's like, none of this... You know nothing about power. You know nothing about what it is we're here for. This is ours. You're, this is all ours already. We just... We've just been gone too long, that's all. Well, when I was a young gnome, um, you know, living living at my home in Steelberry, uh, I was you know interested in you know engineering and and this kind of thing. But I I, I also was interested in living creatures, and I had a little a little um, you know a little a little glass box you know filled with dirt and filled with ants you know and those little plenty of ants living in the box and you could see these ants scurrying around and there were the worker ants and the other the, the queen ant and all the fighter ants and they'd go out and you know gather food and, and live and you know I, I'd watch them and I, I'd like them you know, I'd, I'd care for them as they needed caring for which you know wasn't too much but but my point is that you know you stand before us now and you claim that you are to us as we are to these ants well, all I would say to that, and, you know, clearly we are at your mercy, and, you know, clearly you can do what you will with this world, but all I could say is that, you know, there's always a bigger ant out there, so who knows which ant farm you're living in. So, while you start this, right, so you're, this is a, you're, you're, you're I'm not going to say that you're monologuing, because that's not the right word for it, right, but you're having a, you're opening a conversation with him. And as you start, as you get through to about sentence two or sentence three of that conversation, he actually moves over to the throne and kind of sits back a little bit. And he takes a very discerning look, and he's really taking your words in. Mm -hmm. It's He's not offering you, it's not a placation, it's not a you're on my level. He's listening to you. And he says to you, and he says, Ants. How many of these ants did you have? Oh, several thousand in the colony, yeah. That's interesting. All of the creations, and, and you play with ants. Right, they're a fascinating creature. You know, they, they work for, for their colonies. They, you know, they support you know, one another. You know, they, you know, they are very hardworking and, and very intelligent as a, as a group. So he looks over. And he looks at it. He he go. He looks to his right, and then the worm approaches, and 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 I don't want to say that it sits down, right? But it seems to relax next to him, and he starts petting it again, you know, not even realizing that he's doing it. It's just an it's just an effect. And he says, "Ants." And he looks over to his left, right, where and and it's it's empty over here. And. And I'm using, these are just three models that I'm using, right? But this is something that's a little bit impromptu. This is not exactly, these aren't their names or anything. I'll tell you what these are in a second. And next to him, three girls appear. Three very, um, they're younger, they're in their mid-twenties. Um, they're blonde, and you can see specifically, very specifically, they have the Tillich face. You've seen Laura Tillich's painting, right? You've seen it. You've seen um, uh, you've seen the boys. You've seen Faps and Finches. There's some very discernible features. You deduce that these are the three daughters of, of Laura Tillich and Benton Tillich. And they're standing there. They appear out of nowhere. And they're standing there. And I don't want to say that they're comatose, but they're just... They're rigid, but not they're 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 at attention, if you will. And he looks at you, Ellie, and he goes, "Ants like these? Ants like those? Um, I suppose, yes. Um, 
you been... Hang on, hang on. Does he mean ants or aunts? <laughs> ants is in the bug, not aunts. <laughs> but you're, these would be the nieces. Or actually the daughters. They'd be the cousins of Naps and Finches. <laughs> what was that? Ants. Ants, ants or aunts? <laughs> Miners, not miners. <laughs> <laughs> mm. When, when I had to leave my home in Steelbury and I was unable to take the ant farm with me, I went to a nearby uh, wood and uh, released the colony there to create a, a new home. Will you do the same with your ants? Well, it depends. <laughs> It depends on, on, on what you consider mine. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and he looks down at Molaram's bloody <laughs> smear mark, and he says, maybe that would have been better for your ants. I mean, I'd describe him as more of a termite than an ant, personally. <laughs> but but what, what about, you know, what, yeah, we, the, these, the, the, these girls that you have just summoned uh, they're, they're clearly related to the family that we're here to investigate were you here decades ago when Laura Tillich uh, was clearly involved in some kind of uh, you know uh, uh, some, some of this cultist activity in some way so the minute you say decades he kind of his is one side of his mouth curls up right and he says he says decades yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some kind of, you know, time is non-linear kind of super, <laughs> no, super... No, yeah, he looks at you and he says, you mean millennia, don't you? Oh, I see. Well, you've been away for a very long time then, I suppose. To us, it was merely decades. So he, he looks down at, um, at the blood worm, and then he looks over at the three daughters... And then he looks back at you again and he goes, wouldn't it be better for them than to just, I mean, what happened to your ant colony? Do you know? Would they have been better off? I mean... B better off being smushed? <laughs> well, yes, they didn't have their caretaker anymore. No, but they can take care of themselves. You know, they're, they're, they're wild animals. You know, there are all the ant colonies in the area. I chose a spot where they would be, you know, not competed for too strongly by, by the other colonies, but it's certainly an area where they could thrive, no doubt. So I, I think... But what's the, the point? Well, the, the, that's a very good question, and ultimately <laughs> it's not for us as ant keepers to answer that, though. That's for the ants... Ant keepers. <laughs> that's, that's for the ants to answer, right? You know, all, all, all we can do is give them the opportunity to answer that question for themselves. Answer that question. Thank you for your confusion, Dagger. <laughs> so then, if you were in my shoes, little one, what would you do with these ants? Well, I'd ask them what they want. Did you ask the ants what they wanted? Well, no, but I wasn't particularly capable of communicating well on a very meaningful level, except to note that the ants sought out food. They sought out, you know, areas for expansion. They sought out, you know, the growth of their colony. And so I provided them with, you know, with, with these opportunities when I left. So he stands up from his throne, right? And he kind of rounds around the right, the left hand, your, your screen left around it. He pets his bloodworm again and he moves around to this side of the throne and just kind of puts, puts a hand on the throne itself and is kind of leaning on it. And he says, I don't think I'm going to release these ants. Uh, are the girls, are they like moving or... To they're yeah. unresponsive. They're just standing there. Um, they're, they, they, don't, you, they, they don't have... They, it's a blank look, but it's not a dead look. It's, they've not been brought back from the dead. They've not been... You know, it's just they're, they're there. They're physically there. Why? Why won't you release them? Why do you have them? What happened those millennia ago? <laughs> that's that's a longer conversation. You 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 would you. 
you wouldn't even you wouldn't even be able to understand the smallest portion of that millennia these you are ours you don't know it yet you have lost your respect for the old gods simply because we have not been here it's our fault it's our fault as much as anybody else's We've allowed your gods, your patrons, your deities to make you think that you were theirs. But they're as much ours as you are. And, he, and he's, he's kind of he's, he's, he's kind of moving around to the girls and he says, I'll make you a deal. Do you want a deal, little gnome? Well, all I can say is that respect is a two-way street and... While fear may be sufficient for you to, you know, rule this world, there are other approaches. But I can deal. We can deal. Are, are there any other reactions from any other of the party that you're hearing this, seeing this? That is woefully, woefully unequipped <laughs> to make any contribution no, whatsoever. No, and that's fine. You guys can all kind of, you know, kind of, kind of, you know. Daedal, I notice you're still back behind the column. Is that intentional? Yep. Okay, that's fine. So yep. he he then he kind of at, at the at, at your words of we can make a deal. He then kind of stands back up and there's a there's a there's another gaunt smile across his face, and he says, "What if I kill one, take one, and release one? That's the best of uh, of all three worlds, then." Well, which which worlds? Like, what what gain is there here? I'm I'm afraid, oh mighty one, you're operating on some plane that is far beyond our comprehension. I I don't understand your purpose, your motive. I don't understand what you get out of holding them captive. I don't understand, you know, why you would kill them. You know, they're 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 not captives. They're mine. These are not. These are, you 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 speak on a level, that that you actually think that you have any bearing on the world around you. Well, we may not This have... is not a case of ownership. They're mine. You're mine. Everything is mine. The old gods were here long before anything else. And will be here long after you're gone. We've just been away too long. We have ignored you too long and allowed this festering to continue nothing more but back to these three how about that how about we do that how about i release one i kill one and i take one no but i deal. have you choose which ones it happens to let's see let's see if you can pass this test test in what way is it a test we'll, we'll call it a ant experiment <laughs> i don't know i tire of being toyed with to be honest um, maybe I am an ant. Maybe we are all ants, but... No, 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 no. There's no talking your way out of this one, my friend. We've already engaged. You said you'd deal. Let's deal. Well, I mean, I not heard the deal. I Obviously, I wanted to hear well, the, the deal. Well, the deal is I'm going to release one, kill one, and take one. You get to choose which, and the one that's yours is the deal. Can we talk with him? Can we talk with whom? The, the three girls. With the ants? <laughs> sure. Well, I will answer as well. We can uh, lay pheromone trails and you know follow one another around. <laughs> I see. I see no reason for that. It's a simple choice. There are three it's, sisters. It, there is no choice. It's, I'm it's willing Hudson's to release choice. one. At this point, Dacker pipes up and says, "Pick the hot one." <laughs> I mean, from what I can see, they're all identical. <laughs> so, so looking at them, they're, you can tell they're all sisters, right? They're all very, they're only about a year. Ellie, you remember from the journal, right? That they're about, you know, about a three year span between them, right? This was, this was a time frame from the journal where there was a great, a great time of propagation at the manor, right? Everybody was having kids, right? A lot of the families were popping out kids fast. Um, and they, before their time at the manor, were unable to have children, if you remember. Or mm. at least it just didn't happen. 
So the night demon kind of moves over behind them, and they disappear, and then they all appear on your side of the chasm. And again, yes, they look identical here, but there, there's three from left to right. We'll say it's youngest to oldest. And he says, they're just ants. If they're just ants, then, you know, why do they mean that much for you? You know, can't you spare? This is this is the deal we've made. This is the deal we've brokered, little gnome. Well, I, I again, I kind of, you know, I'm feeling like I wasn't really <laughs> making this deal out. I was just open to the possibility of hearing the terms of the deal before I accepted. <laughs> Are you some cheap trickster? You know, for some kind of all-powerful universe... You know, knowing you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, ent entity. You know, th this is this is um, yeah. This feels cheap. So he moves back over to the throne and then again sits down. But this time he takes his right leg and it's over the the armrest. He's very much relaxed. I'm waiting for your choice, little gnome. All right, huddle up. Uh, I I you know motion to the to the other members of the party. And... and and when when you guys kind of get together, right, he just completely disregards you and goes back to petting his, his, the big worm. He doesn't even care what's going on now across. So, I don't know, this giant bell end is wearing <laughs> on my patience, and I don't know what you know, we, we do. Do you guys have any ideas? Not much. I mean, if he can fucking explode that mole around, like, in a second and just obliterate him, it doesn't seem like we can reason with him or kill him or, like, there doesn't, you know, we doesn't seem to have much... We can't fight him in any way, can we? We can't no. fight him in any way. So we no. we are completely at his mercy. And if he's telling us to pick one, then I guess we've got to pick one. I mean, that's that's as much as I can think. And um, can we not get Flargle to, like, put him to sleep? I, I I doubt it. Not not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, that's cold, Dimmy. I mean, we could just get him to roll six million, and then uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah if we roll six away. million, we we've got him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I think we should be trying to get out of here with our lives, right? Like that's pretty much the prime the prime objective now, right? <laughs> well, maybe that's the maybe that's the good point. And I, I turn to the demon, the night demon, and I say, okay, I choose myself to be killed, and you can, you can have, you know, and, you know, you can, you can, you can take, I don't know, the others can decide about the others, but yeah, I'll trade myself for, for one, the one you would kill. No, Elliot, no, says Dacker. <laughs> no! Okay, so the night, the, so the night you. demon... You know, the minute you turn to... So again, he, just, he completely ignores you guys while you're talking amongst yourselves, right? The minute that you address him, his attention's back on you. It's, it's, it's almost overly polite. It's eerie, right? And he looks at you and, 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 and your words of, you know, I choose myself to be... It's... Could you have traded places with an ant when you were releasing them into the, into the forest? I mean, no, but I wasn't an ant in that analogy. I, I, I am in this one, you know. And two, two ants are already dead, uh, uh, you know, and their blood is on my hands. You know, I, I won't see another one die. This wasn't part of the deal, Elliot. The deal was to choose one of those three, not yourself. The deal was a load of bollocks, to be honest. He set me up. I didn't not agree to the deal. <laughs> he set me if, up. If, if he, if he wants ants to play with, then he can take me. Or to you know to torment or whatever to kill. I interject and say no, take me, take me. Oh, no, Dimitri, I'll he he should take me. <laughs> Fucking hell, it's so, so, team um, volunteering to die, battling over who gets to die. Who's gonna die? So the night demon right away just he just he looks at at, at the gnome the gnome and he says, little gnome. You've got to make this choice. This is the deal. Oh, you know what species I am, do you? For somebody who's so above it all, that's a, like quite a high level of detail. Not an ant anymore, am I? <laughs> Only you have referred to yourself as an ant, my friend. I thought that was you know, part of the analogy. So he, he rises, he says, that's, uh, 
that's interesting, but you still have to make your choice. I really, I'm very interested to see how you make this. I want to see how far you've come in these millennia we've gone. I, I am very, I am honestly very curious to see how you make this choice. Well, I mean, I divest myself of it. There is no choice to make. I will not make it. I'm, I'm done. They cannot be made. There is nothing to choose between them, nor should there be. So he looks over at um, at Daka and at Dmitriev. Your friend doesn't want to make uh, make the decision and see through his agreement with me. Mm. And you've just summed it up right there. He is my friend, and I will not make a decision beyond his decision. There's only one way to save one of them. One of them is coming with me. And one of them is joining Molaram here. What is this game? What is this game and why are you playing it? It's not a game. I'm curious to see how far you've come. I feel like my brain is so tiny out of character. I don't know. I feel like there's I feel like there's some way to, you know, this is some kind of, you know, you know riddle or, you know, you know, game, you know, some, some kind of test. You know, I, I don't know. I, what are we missing? <laughs> so. I'm Ellie, intelligence before, eight in real before, life. It's so, not just. <laughs> Elliot, you're before what, one of the old gods. Right? What do you want to save the three? What do you want? What? But uh, this is. Why would you want to save the three? We, we've already... Because we're humans, um, or we, we are... Gnomes. Ants. ...beings. We are, <laughs> like, we care for each other. Like, you are, you are all big and powerful and great, and you don't have to worry about anyone else. But together we are, like, individually we're nothing, but together we are everything. Well, when they were given to me before, 10 years ago, nobody said anything. Given by whom? Their mother. Mm. Oh, right. Okay, okay. A, a bit of a group huddle. So she sacrificed oh, her what? children to, to stop what was happening. Uh, with the so, so, Elliot, give me, a, give me a perception check here at advantage again. Sorry, I had to mute that. Oh my god. No, you're good. Oh my goodness. Oh, not 20. Okay, Elliot. See right through you, big lad. <laughs> no, it, honestly, right? This He has answered to your knowledge. You have no reason to think otherwise, and I'm not saying this from a deceitful standpoint, like you have no reason to think. I mean, you literally feel it in your soul. He's He answers all of your questions, and he answers them all truthfully. I, I never doubted otherwise. Yeah, he, I mean, he's 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 not withholding anything. You almost wonder what kind of conversations you could have with if you weren't in the middle of this, right? The 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 logical side of you is you you see an open tome before you, but then the 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 uh, religious side of you the the more grounded I don't want to call it grounded the more protective side of you says but I'm also making this decision about these three these three girls but yeah this I mean it, it's it, it it's it it it's not lost on you that he's answered everything I mean what you know what reason would he have to lie you know he's clearly exactly so far well not only that what reason would he have to withhold it this I mean this is not this is not a hubris thing right Mola Ram was very full of hubris he, you ask a question it's like a you guys are having a conversation over tea I guess that's the best way to put it he's not being haughty he's not looking down upon you although he has made certain statements of you were already mine you know but that's not like a it's it's weird it's not a controlling thing he's not like you're all mine and i own you it's you're mine <laughs> so and i say this to the others you know what what does it even what does it mean for him to to 
to take one? What does it mean for him to, to kill one even? I don't know. Maybe is this not sort of what we would imagine as death? Um, I, I don't know. It's 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 impossible to answer, right? We're dealing with some kind of power on a level beyond our, beyond our ken. Mm. Is he testing us? But what is that? If so, we may, it feels like that. But yeah, what is the know, test? It doesn't does feel like you care about testing us, though, does it? He, he, well, he might want to know if we'll die for point. these women. But why? But he's right. Why well, is right? Why would he care? You know, why would he care what these ants do with each other? Oh, why does he care? It's why weird, even talking right? to us, really. He hasn't like turned his attention to you. It's like the whole conversations about the three girls. He hasn't said choose between Daka and and Dimitriov and and uh, Flargle. He hasn't even brought you guys up, other than answering your question about you saying take me instead. I like I go over to the to the girls and kind of you know <laughs> wave a hand in front of their face you know a little bit you know kind of you know poke one in the hair forehead you know hello you know Look, so they regard you they don't speak there's soft smiles on their faces they look at you with very full eyes they're not lifeless eyes um they you know they they softly interact with you meaning that you know as you kind of look at them they look down upon you they're interactive to a point they're definitely not themselves but they're not they're none the worse for wear at least that you can tell and i assume they don't respond to any verbal interrogation they don't speak if you wanted to ask them a question you'd have to but oh. you guys got like teleporting skills or something <laughs> can we not just teleport out of it <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> well, I, I say, hello, how are you doing <laughs> to, 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 to the three? He must so, want um, something else other than this girl. He must want something else. I'm sorry, say again, um, Dimitri? Like, there must be something else that he wants. What do you want in return for the life of these three women? I don't want their lives. Well, you want one of their lives. No, I'm just going to... I'm going to kill one. I'm going to keep one, and I'm going to give you one. I think it's a fair trade. I think it's a good deal. And what what would you... What, what would you want if you gave us all three? What could you possibly give me? I'm giving you... This is my gift. But what are you I losing mean... if you don't give us the gift? I'm giving you the gift of the choice. Oh, yeah, okay. That's, that's... And what does what happens if you kill all three? Like, I don't understand. It's why would I want to do that? There's no. What benefit do I have from killing all three? What yeah, benefit so we, we, do you have we, from we killing make one? No choice then. We just what make benefit no do you have from killing one? What benefit do we have from having the choice? We don't need. We don't need the power that you've got. We don't want the power that you've got. So. Yeah, no deal. No thanks. Well, you, this is a deal that that, that, that the gnome has already made Did with not me. You're going make to make this deal. choice at some point. Well, no, it wasn't a deal. It was a gift. <laughs> you said you gave us the gift well, of the, the choice. The gift is the life that you get out of it. But why do we want the life? One of these is going to be your do with her as you wish. Well, why do well, that doesn't benefit us? It's her or to her family. What do I care? Well, what, what do we care? <laughs> Why does it alive? <laughs> if they don't mean anything to you and they don't mean anything to us, it doesn't seem like the choice matters to any of us, the lives matter to any of us, or the deaths matter to any of us. I uh, I, I take a walk and I walk over here. Uh, I can't move, but whatever. Uh, oh, yeah, you gotta, yeah, there you go, top left. All right. And I go, Floggle, you said nothing. What do you make of this? Have you seen uh, anything like this before? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I've made a deal with a dragon before. This is all too familiar. This is. I don't want to be here. He's not gonna. He, he's got his own motives and. He's what got happened? His what megalomania, happened? and uh, that's something that he's. Like, he's not going to let us 
go. What happened with the deal with the dragon? Well, I ultimately had to uh, betray him. The dragon? Away. Yeah. So you made the deal and then ran away? I mean, I may or may not have accidentally stolen something from him. <laughs> <laughs> Dimitri off space. <laughs> <laughs> Flargo's full of all kinds of funny information. Problem is that they can't be trusted. They can't be trusted. What? You, what you was stole your, the dragon's what, thing. What, what, what is your counsel? What, what do you advise? That we shouldn't have talked to him in the first place. So we just kill one. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't want to interact with the... I, I haven't... This is a problem, right? We can't do anything here. So what, what, do you, what do we get if we kill one? Or if you kill one? I'm not going to kill any of the... No, uh, not you, not girls. you. Me. Well, one what, is the least, one is... What, is... what is the name of this deity that we are? What, what is his name? Night Demon. Night Demon. Night Demon. And he, he, he kind of gazes over to you, and he just looks at you. And I say... If I kill one, what happens? You're going to let us go? Oh, you, you're not going to kill one. What if I do? Why would you want to? To just save the other two. Well, that, that's see, that's not how this works. And then they disappear, and then they reappear next to him. Oh. What is this all about? <laughs> I told you, so it's, not, says, I told you it's, it's about it's, his megalomania. It's it's what? very simple. I I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I realize we've been gone for a long time, and I I understand that that. We haven't paid as much attention as we've needed to, as we will. How do we know that even? It's real? pretty simple. One dies, one goes, one stays. But why? Why, why night demon? Why? <gasps> why? Because he's a melodramatic <laughs> bastard. What's what's this? Not literally, mellow, why? Mellow why? Thing that you talk well, of you know, the gnome brought up that he let these ants go, and he and I was very interested in in to see what decisions he'd make on this. Okay. Yeah, he let all the ants go, not a third of them. He let all the ants go. There you go. Mm, there you go. There you go. What you got to say about that, Night Demon? <laughs> the deal still stands. You're going to make the choice one way or another. You're going to make the deal. But why? There's no Where's deal. I, like, I don't understand. There's no deal. Well, if they we, you die, don't, then you what don't happens? gain or lose what anything. Happens? We don't make gain or lose time? anything. <clears throat> there's no give and there's no take. Oh, but we, I don't. Then why does there have to be a, a winner or a loser in any deal? It's a oh, simple choice. That's, because, because, well, lose, that's what a deal lose, is. <laughs> no, we can lose the nom. That's the problem. <laughs> that's literally what a deal is. Somebody no. gives something and somebody, you know, takes something. Well, right? I mean, we we gain a life returned to you know the the world, right? And we lose one to, you know, the demon man. Yeah, and if but we why? don't, we lose all three. Like, what's the thing? Like... Because he's, you know, he's just like a, you know, he's, he's like a big brain, isn't he? Like, he's, he's galaxy brain. Like, he thinks he's clever and he's trying to, like, you know, do, you know, just try to be like some trickster asshole guy, you know. So when you say this, Ellie, like in your conversation, he kind of, he kind of giggles a little bit when you say that, right? Like, he's some trickster asshole. He's just... Okay, you know, like, I mean, he honestly, he's got like a little soft giggle to that. Oh, he just so it says, amuses him. It amuses yeah, it him does. You like know, clown. it's like he's watching you guys, right? He's like, he's watching this interaction. The, the four of you trying to decide what the hell's going to happen next. Um, mm. You know, and he, he just says, they're already mine. I'm giving you one of them. I just want to see which one you're going to take and which one's leaving with me and which one. And then he looks down at Mola Ram. Stays here. I pick the one on the right, you take the one on the left, and the one in the middle is the other option. Say again? I take the one on the right, you take the one on the left, 
and the middle one is the other option. Well, it, uh, if we were going to approach it in like a purely logical manner, and if we were attempted at all to engage with this, shouldn't we save the youngest one? No, we should save the hardest one. Why are the young? Which what were they three years apart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not, not yeah they went from not youngest to oldest, left to right, just for sake of. Um, and they won't role speak role. to us. So if we talk to them, they won't speak to. We can't give them the choice. They regarded you. They did not respond to you. We should not have to give them the choice. <laughs> this is outrageous. No, we just have to do it. We have to just this this day. Like it's either one or none, right? In my opinion. It, what other way is there? What other way is there? You want we to must be able to outsmart this guy somehow. He's too full of himself. Try and attack him, then. Go on. No, not, not outfight. <laughs> we definitely can't outfight him. Why? So a night demon, why do you think that one of them... When you, when you address him, Doctor, real quick, when you address him, he literally, he, he regards you. Like... Good. Like, why I want to you... know your question. Why do you think... That one of them surviving is a win for us. Why is one dying a win for you? They're, they're, nobody wins. I'm not trying to win anything. If I, what is winning? <laughs> when someone dies, does somebody win? When someone lives, does somebody win? When no. When the so wind blows the east to west, does somebody win? So what? Well, the, the somebody guy wins died last, and the guy who lived won, right? <laughs> yeah. So who's... That remains to be seen. Did he murder the other? <laughs> so what's the deal then? There's no deal to be made then, is there? No, it's a very simple deal. You just choose. <laughs> and then you go on your way. How about we just go on our way without choosing? How about we choose all three to survive? Oh, no, no, I, want to, I told you, this is. I want to see this now. This is good. I'm enjoying this. Let's roll the dice. You're enjoying three ants? Wow. I mean, I enjoyed oh, my okay, ant farm. So to be honest, did did the did the gnome enjoy his ant farm? Yeah, I did. I did. I enjoyed yeah, watching thousands, the ants. though, not three. <laughs> yeah, three ants would have been quite boring. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just on Flagle. this planet to amuse you, are we? Is that is that the Flagle, deal? What do you think? I I want to know what Flagle well, thinks. I, you don't amuse me. I am curious. I mean, it's it's been some time since I've been here. Had this one, and he kind of glances down again at the smudge that was Molaram, not decided to take my pets from me, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have come back in the first place. Oh, so you came here with the worm. Mm. Interesting. These are mine. These are not his. This is all mine. You see this temple before you? This temple's been here for millennia. So if we send the worm back, do you go back? How would you propose to send this one back? Kill it. Oh, don't say that. Out he loud, just, he just, he kind of, he, he takes a little. It's, it's almost, it's, it's a haughty, not a laugh, but like a. He's, it, it, it's almost a, a sign of respect. Like this guy's got some balls. I'll show you balls. <laughs> the bat wing. <laughs> no, he's already lost his other hand cock. <laughs> it's down in the bubbling turmoil of whatever. Oh, dear. And he looks over at Elliot and again, he says, the choice is still here. Throw me and balls. If, <laughs> and, and, and if we leave, if we refuse to take part in this... Oh, well, you're not game. leaving. I'm not leaving till this is done. This is good. I'm enjoying this. Okay, I, I will. And he looks over at at at, at Dimitri. I'm sorry, at Daka, and he says, "Enjoyment is 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 had in many many ways." So this deal is. I'm just curious. I want to see how this goes. I'm the, very. The deal is we entertain you in some way. Us no, you're not entertaining this. me. I'm just enjoying this. There is a difference. You're not. This isn't a joke, if that's what you're insinuating. I just simply want to see what you'll choose. I, I walk away th back through the arches. Mm. That's pretty dangerous. He might explode you. Yeah. <laughs> At least it would, you know, you know, be a be a thing. Yeah, I turn. I also okay. Turn. So right there, Relly, you get to there, and just in your mind, this 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 uh, this voice sounds. It just says the choice is still here. 
it's very it's very soft and quaint and it's not trying to overpower you it's not trying to do any psychic damage of any kind and it's his voice the choice is still here little one I'm gonna keep walking <laughs> what are the others of you doing uh, Dimitrov are you I'm gonna follow it the gnome I'm following the norm. I can't, like, if he can't make the choice, I can't make the choice. Like, I don't understand. Mm. I mean, it's a false choice. There is no choice to be made. Yeah. So you, like, but are you going to let all three of them die just because you can't pick one? Well, who says that they die, though? Maybe he just keeps them in whatever kind of, you know, immaterial realm he's what if What if they, well, okay, yeah, that's fine. But what if they all die? Is that not worse than one of them dying? Are you talking to me, Dimmy? <laughs> You're not <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> like, I can't even look at you right now. Because <laughs> it would have just what choice would you one. make? <laughs> I would have just kept one. I would have just gone like, Bob. Like, at the end of I'm a soldier, right? Life doesn't mean much to me. It doesn't mean as much to me as it does to you, right? Mm -hmm. I am a, a soldier of war. Like... I don't understand this cryptic guy. Mm -hmm. I don't understand, but the loss of life, like the loss of one life, outweighs the loss of three. Yeah, to it's be, to... simple maths to me. That's that's all it is. So I, I'm I'm not sure that leaving necessarily does kill all three, but also even if it did, it's it's the principle of the thing, right? It's 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 oh, not even the principle. What you you want a whole nation to die on principle? <laughs> Wait, what? We we accelerated quickly from three people to a whole well, nation. Well, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Like, war is there to stop. Like, I'm a soldier. I'm a warrior, right? And the wars that I have fought, yes, there has been endless loss. And and yes, I, I, I ran away and I went and chopped trees in the woods for how many years? And then I realized that chopping the wood was not gonna bring like generally fighting those wars were saving people's lives at the end of the day and i did not want to cut humans down like i ran away and i cut trees down for years and years and years but now i'm back because i realized that cutting the trees down like the wars that i fought saved lives despite killing hundreds of people during them do you, do you understand? Like, I do understand. You understand. I understand the pragmatism. Uh, yeah. But, so, like, you can't run away. You can't run away from war. Like, no. But you, we we've been fighting all the way through these catacombs over the last week, you know. And, and I've been okay with that. And we people have died. And that's you know. And, that's, and this that's, is this is a choice between like you either let all three die or you let one die. But it, it's or, not. It it is. There is no war. Yeah. You know, this is okay. this is not a. You know. This is not. You know. Fighting an army. This is not. You know. Fighting a nation. You know. This is uh, yeah, a trick, a trap. You know. This is a uh, something that we cannot touch. Something that we cannot engage with. It's it's. It, there is no choice. I mean, he could just kill one himself, right? You know. Well, then I'm with you, Norm, and I will walk away. But if that's your choice. Well, uh, th seeing the seeing this, and I don't know how much of that was taught between them. Like Daka, ultimately is about self-preservation, and he's seen Molaram fucking exploded, and he's looking at Elliot and Dmitriov walking away, and he doesn't want them to get exploded, and he doesn't want to be exploded. And I think ultimately, I don't know what I'd do, but I think Daka would just like point at one of them and go, "That one lives." We'll take that one or whatever. Interesting. So, the gnome made the deal, and now no. he can't bring himself to see it through. What makes you so sure that you're the one to make this decision? They've walked off. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> There's no one else to and make it. And then, Elliot, you, you reappear back right next to Daka. Yeah, I, I thought, I thought <laughs> there'd be something right. along those and, lines. And he yeah. looks at you and he says, so this one here, right? And this is a conversation again, right? Again, over tea. He goes, this one here has decided that, and which one did you choose? Give me a specific, Jimmy. Don't say I pointed that one. I want to know which one. I mean, well, whichever one, the nearest middle one. So that's the middle daughter. Right. <laughs> 
right? We, we've assumed that it's, it's youngest to oldest from left to right, just for sake of whatever. So this one here says that the middle one should die. He's assuming your responsibility. No, that was the one to survive. That was the one to save. I'm sorry, the one to survive. He's assuming your responsibility in our deal. I I have no responsibility. This is a sham. You know, you, you know what you're doing. You are, you know, some cheap trickster. You know, I'm not having this old gods thing. This is, you know, there's no you know, logic or meaning. There is no, nothing beyond that either. You know, if you want to kill one, then kill one. I made no deal. I want no part of this. You, you know, your toying with me is over. I'm finished. Interesting. So, the logic, the the science, the the studies of the gnomes over these past thousands of years, and you leave him to make the decision. There is no decision. Well, he's made it. I mean, he's not. He's picked a random number. Yeah, it's not a decision. Well, it's still a decision, but I just find it interesting that you would allow him to do that. He was obviously clearly capable while you are not. I don't know why you're incapable of it. I figured if any of the four of you could answer this question, or five of you, I'm sorry, with, um, with um, Elon, if any of the five of you could answer this question, I would have thought that, uh, that, that one of the gnomes could have made this the best. Why? Maybe I was wrong about your people. Why? Why? Why a gnome? The logic, the, the, the knowledge. You're, you're well known for that. We may have been gone, but we know how you were created. So am I... <laughs> am I, am I meant to have picked something off in the journal or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. When you, so what do you mean by that, Elliot? I don't know. Like, asking? I've been reading it. Like, I'm trying to figure out is, you know, is, is, is one of them... Maybe there was only one daughter and we're being trolled or something, but there were definitely three daughters and you know, maybe, maybe one was evil, I don't know. I'm trying to work out if I like, missed something, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, so I'm totally out of character. I really fear that I'm breaking Elliot here. I, he, I, deserves I, I, he deserves it. He deserves it. There's only the character that's meant to be broken, not the actual, you know, know. not the role player. The shit out of me. It's like, all of a sudden, Elliot doesn't show up for boat. He doesn't show up for anything. <laughs> so, um, so then back in character, obviously. Yes, the, the, the gnomes are well known for their logic. If anyone, if anyone could, could eventually comprehend us and, and what and who we are, it would have been your people. Isn't logic uh, a, a you know a, a, a mortal construct though? Yeah, what use does an old god have for logic? Well, logic is logic. There's logic and there's emotion, right? You you one must have both. I clearly do. He clearly does, and he points at Daka. He clearly does. He points at Dimitrov. He followed you instantly. He must. He must have a bond with you of some kind. There is a bond between the four of us, you know, and you know, I indicate Elon as well. You know, we, we have we have not known each other for a particularly long time, but yeah, you know, we've gone through a lot. We've gone through a lot to to be here. We've gone through a lot to you know try to find some you know salvation for those who died now and before, and some some safety for those who remain and we end up here talking to you know whatever on earth you are in some kind of broken you know locked game you know with no with no way out can i ask you a question no don't you know the answer <laughs> no i'm not omnipotent okay very well ask away <laughs> Would you be, would you be okay if all three died? No. Why not? Because they are people. And because logic aside and emotion aside, there is some fundamental drive for a living creature to, you know, see the, you know, endurance of other living creatures. The choice has to be made. I, I have to see this through to the end. 
would you would you return and make the choice in 10 days time <laughs> i'd rather <laughs> Did you do that <laughs> I'd, i no yeah that's that's in character i'd rather i'd rather I'd rather make the choice in ten days' time than make it one. No, no, I, 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 um, I, you know, I, there is no choice. There is no choice. But if I, I will return in ten days' time, and yeah, you know, I kind of look around at the others. You know, what do you think? Would you, would you like to come back in ten days? Do you think? The question I is... I never want to come down here again to tell Flagle, the truth. Like, like, honestly, Flagle was had experience with this interaction, and he said, ignore it and leave it. I mean, but I tried to left and I got them. teleported back, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you're going to, like, they're going to die either way. Like, this is a no-win situation, right? From what Flagle has said. Flagle has experience. It's no win and no lose. I, I, I don't care what happens to these three. It doesn't matter. It, it, you know, like he said, he, he's they're already his. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they live or die. So who cares? It's all pointless at the end of the day. <laughs> I mean, it's not pointless for the three sisters. The only well, it's pointless to Daka. The only thing that matters is that I make it out of here. But like, were the three sisters alive anyway, or is he bringing them back from the dead? Because like, I don't, I don't really understand no, the I didn't understand time that. scale. Because they're not, they're not actually alive, right? They're like, I think they, they're alive. They disappeared so ten years ago. They look thing, none the worse for wear, right? They just, they, they're, they don't look zombie-like. He's I mean, like. He's like Doctor Who or whatever, were, right? He's... They were like dead. To Did they their disappear relatives. though? Did they disappear ten years ago? They were gone. They were gone. They were dead. They were like there was no sign of them. But were they so, dead like... or disappeared? I don't think there were like, any bodies. Nobody. Or anything like that. Everyone was disappeared, Jim. Yeah, like so nobody just disappeared. was dead. Like there wasn't any bodies or anything. Yeah, so it just disappeared. disappeared. So. They she must have, have traded down. them in some way, right? Like, so something must have gone on. And to be fair, like, death may be a better option for them because, like, who knows where they've been? Do you know what I mean? Like, they could have been in some horrific place that they would rather die. Bloodworm orgies, they might be They might be loving it for the last so 10 years. So he hears this, right? Blood demon here, or I'm sorry, night demon hears this. And he, and he looks to me and he says, you know what, that's a good point. That's a really good point. I'll return their mindsets to the day they were given to me. Given? Yeah, the bloody lower in it or whatever. Holy sh <laughs> What? <laughs> given. Sorry, I was gonna swear. <laughs> like this is all this is all that aunt. Who's the aunt with the mirror? Lower. And yeah. And the mirror. And what is the mirror's relevance? And what Well oh, Flagel was after the mirror, right? Flagle, speak to me now. You know this. What's going on, champ? He knows what's going on. He knows what's up. Look at him. He, 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 he knows what's up. It's a megalomaniac demon. Like, there's nothing up. Can, he's, sorry, he's... I'm, I'm dumb. What does megalomaniac mean? Uh, it means uh, you're overcome, like it's a psychopathic uh, disorder, basically, where you're larger than life. Yeah, but like, what's more you important okay. than the world, like everything okay. else. Yes, but what's, what, I, I need to know what you knew about the mirror now. Nothing. You knew nothing about the mirror, you just had to get it and get your hands Yeah, on. I knew it was a magical mirror. I want magical stuff. <laughs> so this is no way tied to this megalomaniac that you're... Uh, probably, yes. It's and a like, magical He's saying that these three, the these three women coming. were given to him. Yeah, I'm assuming that things are connected, but I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> so he looks at Flargo immediately, right? And he's like... Summon? And he just he just got a smile on his face. Yeah, I'm I'm not interacting with this asshole. I wanna get out of here. Very well then, Night Demon, who turn their mind states. And well, then which send one is going with you? Talk to them. <laughs> Sorry? Well then which one is going with you? Which one should I return their mind state for when they depart? Oh god 
Damn, look at this bastard. <laughs> What's the order that they went missing in? I mean, all, all we know is that Lauer turned up at the K Lawn's office or whatever, right? And then, or, or was it Oil Enters? I can't remember. And then, and then disappeared. It was never seen again, right? And and then, and but then... is Lauer the one that gave them to him in the first place? Well, and we, is we, it to uh, him or who? Who have they given who to who? Well, we don't. We don't know for sure, right? But I don't know. That seems so, something like that. Whether she was. You know, bewitched or something or whatever. It, it it kind of seems like you know, something like and that. Happened. And is she giving them to him to prevent him coming back? Or but, yeah, giving... yeah, I think it seems like she was trying to appease him or something. Yeah, yeah. Holy! But how but, did she do but it? Maybe because not. he hasn't been here for millennia, so yeah. he wasn't there to take them. Well, so like... well but our decades might be his millennia. No, because it was decades. No, no, that doesn't make any sense. Because he said this was built millennia ago. Or vice versa, Elliot. And they're three years apart, Your millennia right? may be his decades. Mm. Like he said, ten years ago, which is when they disappeared and stuff, right? So like that kind of tracks. Mm. So how well, how did he end up with them then? Good I question. think we need to talk to the country wizard. I think we take the ten days and we talk to the country wizard. Mm. I mean... I mean I think time would probably, you know, We're just help, having you know. an outside opinion, mate. We've got no idea what's going on. Yeah, we could take 10 days to decide. Yeah, that seems a reason. Like, I mean, mean, like, in 10 days, if we don't decide, we're in the same place we're in now. And we could just not come we, back we as can well. ask people. We can ask people. <laughs> like, we have no wow, idea. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I, I feel like we might be... Uh, Return to whether we uh, we wish That's or not. That's a good point. Honest. Yeah, he might just teleport. But Flagwalskarp has interacted with these type of beings before, and he's like completely disinterested and has like disdain for this. And like we've got, I I trust his judgment to some sense. Like I I I trust his judgment. I think he has clear disdain and. I, I don't think that the four of us and Elon have the qualifications to deal with this now. I mean, I think Elliot's got plenty of disdain as well, but unfortunately it doesn't do you much good when you get, like, turned into a red mist, does it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it's not gonna... <laughs> At the end of the day, he's got all the cards, hasn't he? And I guess he gives us ten days, so we take ten days. I just look at Flargle and just, like, go, what, what, what would you do? I and outsmart him. We're not gonna Ow. do that. Ow. We're not gonna do that talking with him. So we we take the ten days, right? We take the ten days and we we well, leave. Buying time seems like a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to tell him, Nom? Oh, he's well, the one he's talking to. <sighs> We'll see you in ten days, then, Night Demon. Um, I I can only imagine that our conversation then will be no different to how it was now. I don't know. So, what I... so he looks down at you, right, from across, and he's sitting in his in his in, in the throne. It's not necessarily his throne. He's sitting in the throne again, right? And he looks at you, and goes, God, "Another surprise." Just a question, if you don't mind. Why delay what you know you have to do? I have to do nothing. I will do no such thing. I won't do it in ten days' time. But maybe, you know, we'll have—I don't know—found another option by then. Fair enough. I'll make you another deal. Do you want another deal? I'd like to hear the deal. That doesn't mean <laughs> I'm accepting it. This is this this is an easy one. You you intrigue me, Elliot. And then you realize you never, I don't think, did you ever tell him your name? Uh, no, I didn't know. Yeah, he says, you intrigue me, Elliot. Cheap politics. And he says, <laughs> I'll make you another deal. This is, this is a good one, though. I think you'll like this one. And on your, on your left um, forefinger, a pure platinum ring appears. Oh. Oh, <laughs> and Dimitriov is turned into paste. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. On your left um, uh, forefinger, a, uh, a, a, a ring appears on it. 
It says, if you ever want to return before the 10 days, just for conversation, you don't have to make the decision. Ask me anything. I find you intriguing. Just touch the ring with your right forefinger and thumb, and you'll be back here with me, and I'll show up, and we'll have a conversation again. Can I bring my Early friends? Early for conversation. But in 10, 10 days' time, you will make a decision, my friend. Well, we'll see about that. It's, I, I wish I could say it's been a pleasure. <laughs> oh, it's been a pleasure for me. This is... I can't believe I've stayed away this long. It's very intriguing. You've impressed me. I've enjoyed this conversation. Come back, please. Use the ring. I invite you. Oh, I feel like I won't have much of a choice. <laughs> and then he just leans back in the chair. Did someone run me down about this ring? I just missed it. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, he gave me a ring using which I can teleport to him if I want a hobnob. Ooh. Not a biscuit at all. <laughs> I'm sure he can produce actual hobnobs as well. Oh man, now that would be a deal worth talking about. <laughs> wow. Hobnob. <laughs> all right, well, I suggest we get out of here and uh, return to the country wizards, you know, see if we can find some kind of solution yeah. that doesn't involve condemning someone to death. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, is that it? Should we just like try to walk so, out of the room? What do you guys do? Yeah, what's? I mean, he's just he's he's in his, he reaches down again and he's just he's he's petting his worm. All right. Um, see you later, then, night demon. Tschüss. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. now. Okay, so let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go off map here, right? So, what else? What do? You, what's? What? What happens next? <sighs> Back to Victor, I suppose. Um, I mean, what happens next is we we get out of this room, and he doesn't drag us back, right? Because we're coming back. No, he's not even. I mean, he's, he's, as far as he's concerned, as far as you know, he's done with you for now, at least. You've got ten days. Yeah, man, we, we loot the fuck out of these bodies, I tell you that, and the chests. <laughs> Crowbar open all the chests and uh, search all the bodies. So, is that on it? So, think about this, right? Because I want to make sure. I'll be back in one minute. You got it, Dim. Is that what you, you just had this interaction? Yeah. Is that really what, is that what's going to happen now? What, what, I mean, think about this. I, I want you to, I understand you want to. <laughs> You, you you did a great job. Molaram is dead, and there's there's bound to be something to be had here. But is that honestly what would happen after all of that? I mean, we probably had to sit down and talk about it for like five hours, but I don't think we should we should role players talking about it for five hours. <laughs> it seems weird. I don't know. Something seems very off. I don't know. It's weird as fuck. But like we we just talk about it and try and work out what the hell's happening, wouldn't we? For like a, a, a x amount of time. Because it's not every day that, like, you see a giant god. <laughs> Is it? So, you know, that'd be pretty mind-blowing. And then we'd be t we'd be talking about it for ages. But, you know, seeing as we've just had it happen, it seems superfluous to talk about it right now. Do you know what I mean? Because, <laughs> like... Yeah. You would talk about it for a long time, wouldn't you, if that had happened? Like, if that had happened, you'd basically, your mind would be absolutely blown. Yeah, you'd be you'd be mind fucked right now. Mm. It's true. Mm. Yeah. But I'm also, like, enraged. I'm, I'm angry. This is, like, nonsensical. It's, you know, you know it's, uh, this guy's a real, you know, really annoying. <laughs> he, he never, he's, he might be an old god, but he's a bit of a bell end. Holy smokes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we, I, I, if I can't shoot it, then I'm pretty much worthless. <laughs> it's not something I can shoot with a crossbow. It just all mm. seems so stupid and pointless and contrived. Mm. That's what gods are like, though, isn't it? We, we, it is. Capricious. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so bad because I think I seriously broke Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, that's... 
Like, straight out of uh, some Ray Harryhausen thing, innit? The god there. He's just <laughs> dicking around, doing whatever he amuses him, and then that's what it is. Oh, I used to love Ray Harryhausen films. Mm -hmm. I still do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's... I don't know, like, I think we just talk about what the fuck happened for a long time. And but then... are you guys, but honestly, are you sticking around in this temple? I mean, that's the honest, that's the, as the, as the GM, DM, whatever the hell you want to call me, you know, are you sticking around? Is this something where, well, are you guys question, like counting, know. counting your blessings and getting the flog out of there? I'm assuming if you leave, you'll grab the two guys that you found alive. You'll knock on the door. Uh, Demetria will identify himself, so on and so forth. I mean, I, I want to get going to Victor ASAP, but obviously I, you know, I wanted to discuss it with a group. Like, your mind would be blown. You wouldn't just, like, oops. You wouldn't just, like, be like, all right, well, let's, uh, let's talk about this later. Let's leave, would you? Do you know what I mean? You'd be like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, there I don't know. I, I started off at holy fucking shit, like, half an hour ago, right? An hour ago at the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> but by, by the end, I'm more like, you know, just pissed off, to be honest. Yeah, annoyed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Largo would want to uh, keep searching the place. And uh, as I said, like, we need to outsmart the demon. No, no, no. Like, but we're not going to be able to outsmart him in a conversation. But we need to, like, find a way over to his side of the platform and, like, try to deceptively dispose of him we shouldn't decept we shouldn't try to deceive him at all because he can just like that kill us all in, in an instant there's no d deceiving him there's no outsmarting him there's just making a choice so that we don't all die <laughs> that's all there is to it at the end of the day i think is definitely daka's point of view and i guess so i, I mean we're having this discussion now right i guess we would definitely talk about it we couldn't just like go Oh well, that happened. Well, yeah, you would. I don't. I don't. I don't anticipate you guys would just in silence either walk out or stay. Right? Yeah, There's exactly. going to be a. Yeah, so we'd have to chat. For, we'd we'd be talking about it. I don't think. I don't think Elliot would be over his holy shit moment. I think we'd all be like, holy shit, and having to talk about it a little bit. So, so Elliot's got the, the the stern, pissed off walk, right, where he's cursing <laughs> at his own shoes as he moves moves down the hallway, right? Well, I'm also racking my brains trying to. to think of some way out of this yeah yeah so, so it's completely completely out of character here just so you know this is it's wide open elliot it's wide open jim mm. it's wide open it, it's wide open yeah, that's, that's cool. they, they, i haven't made any preconceived you there's not you know this can go in any direction i'm not this is not a oh well you'll make this decision because as a gm i've just decided you know this is there's a there's this is wide open, so you know, feel free to play it as such. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I think there'd be, there'd be a bit of talk. We'd go back to this room, let, let, like, well, we'd walk away. So, like, I think, where, where, well, let's, we've got the map here. Here's the map. Yeah. So, walk into this room because there's drinks here, right? So, so just walk, walk down this room. And let's get drink let's, and talk about it. <laughs> let's talk about it. So, we talk about it for a while, right? We talk about it for a little while. I guess not too long, because we're all there, so we don't have to, like... It's not like, you know, you're telling your friends, holy shit, I met a demon. <laughs> it's like... My mind would be a bit... We'd be a bit... Mine would be a bit exploded, but yeah, as Elliot said, I guess we'd be a bit over it by this time. Like, we've we've been there talking to him for a while. So I guess... we'd be, But we'd have to talk about what the hell we're doing, right? Like, we couldn't just walk out. And then, so we'd talk a little bit, and then... I guess eventually, after a bit of talking, we'd be like, "Look, we've got to get out. We've got to get back to Victor. Let's let's loot this place and fuck off." <laughs> so, at that point, right, the 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 darkness falls. Right, the scene starts to close around us. The dissolve happens. Everything goes dark. Right, and in in tradition of our of our ending of all of our episodes, we find ourselves in another place again. Right. And, and the scene comes back into focus again. And we see oh. Night Demon, right? And he's walking along a bare landscape. And he's walking towards another figure, very similar in height. Another male, we'll say, you know, and I, and I use that air quotes because we don't know what we're dealing with. Um, 
and it's an individual, very large, very, very, just as jacked as Night Demon is. Long gray flowing hair. And Night Demon walks up and he goes, Physics. Aren't you the father of logic? I just had the most interesting conversation. And then we cut to black. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> very nice right well there you go what an episode thank you so much Jacopo good. incredible absolutely incredible thanks for playing Dimitriov not Dimitriov Dimmy G <laughs> Elliot and Dadle Quist um, and thanks thank for watching you. everyone don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic